In this video, I'm going to tell you how integrating technology into my own classroom completely transformed my instruction and reignited my passion for teaching. In the last four videos, we've covered a lot of ground. I've argued why more than ever before, it's absolutely critical that we take an integrative approach to technology and education. And I've shared some specific strategies for how you can get started using a goals-oriented approach to technology so that you can see the transformative results that technology use with your students can have for yourself. I shared a formula with you for how to build and sequence lessons using technology, as well as walk you through my entire blueprint for how to create a 21st century classroom. If you haven't watched those first four videos yet, definitely check them out. So like I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about my own personal story with bringing technology into my classroom. And when I share my story, there's really two key points that I want to make. The first point is that anyone can integrate technology and create an innovative classroom. And the second is that strategically integrating technology will transform your instructional practice. And once you do it, you'll never go back. So let's start with the first point. Anyone can integrate technology. I'm living proof that that's true. You might be surprised to hear that I've spent the majority of my life as a complete technology know-nothing. Long past college, I really only knew how to use computers for basic functions like word processing, navigating the web, and listening to music. And really, it was just listening to music. I was literally the last of all of my friends to get a smartphone. And even today, I don't really get all that excited about things like the new iPhone update. I am legitimately not a quote-unquote techie person. I have a background in English literature. And when I left graduate school over a decade ago to start teaching, the thought of using technology in my classroom never even crossed my mind. I even used to have open hostility toward education technology and wrote off the entire thing because I thought it was all just a big gimmick. So what changed? Really, I just had to see the transformative impact that technology could have for myself. One day years ago during a professional development, a teacher showed me some lessons that she had designed using technology, and I was absolutely blown away. I always had thought of myself as a good teacher, and it's not that I wasn't, but immediately I knew that her classroom was light years ahead of mine. And to be honest, I even felt a little bit embarrassed and ashamed when talking to her about my own classroom practices. She was designing these highly engaging gamified lessons with personalized learning built in that targeted students' skill levels. Even the creative ways she presented her lessons made my monochromatic bitmoji-less Google Slides seem boring and outdated. But what initially drew me in the most was the idea that I could use these tools to engage and excite my students. I had always taken pride in students really loving being in my classroom, and over the years was growing increasingly dismayed by the looks of boredom that I was seeing out there on my students' faces. But I really shouldn't have been surprised. Here I was in my own little classroom bubble, pretending that the world outside that students experienced wasn't entirely infused with technology. For students, they must have felt like they were stepping into a time capsule and going back to the 1950s whenever they walked into my classroom. When the light went off inside of me and I realized that I needed to make a change, I didn't know anything about technology. But what I did know is how to adopt a learner's mindset. Today, I firmly believe that not having a background in technology actually helps me be a better teacher of technology. In the same way that sometimes second language learners understand grammatical rules better than native speakers. And in taking risks and modeling new things for my students, I've also been able to model an innovative mindset so that they feel comfortable making mistakes and trying new things for themselves. So if I can do it, you can do it. And I'm living proof that the most important thing is having an open mind and be willing to learn new things. Next, I'm going to tell you more specifically how technology transformed my instruction. Right now, I could talk about all the ways that bringing technology into my classroom has increased joy, excitement, engagement, and provided students with authentic learning experiences. Just last year, my students made green screen videos to show what they learned about Egyptian social class. They engaged in a question and answer session via Zoom with the author of the book that we were reading together. They designed graphics to show what they had learned about a person they studied during Black History Month. And they made and published podcasts about their own personal life experiences. But rather than all that fancy stuff, I want to tell you about how I use technology to improve my students' skills in reading. I wanna share this with you to emphasize that technology integration is not just about all the fun, engaging, and yeah, relevant activities that you can do with students, but it's also about helping build students' skills to close the achievement gap and achieve some of our loftiest and most important goals in education. 
As teachers, we know that we're supposed to be differentiating instruction in order to give students targeted information at their just right level. When I first started teaching sixth grade 10 years ago, I used to have to go out and find articles that were at different reading levels, but all about the same topic. Then I had to go photocopy those articles and use a spreadsheet with my students' reading scores on it to label those different articles and then make sure I was handing out the right reading packet to each student in class so that they could get some differentiated instruction. Not only was this process extraordinarily time-consuming, I'm really not even sure it was all that effective. But then I started using technology tools to improve my students' skills in reading. First, I started using programs like Newzella that auto-adjust the difficulty of text so that students are reading the same content, but getting it at their just right level. Bam, just like that, I literally shaved hours off of my planning and was using a more effective tool for differentiating reading. Then, in order to invest students more in their own reading growth, we designed a reading tracker that students could use in order to monitor their own progress in reading throughout the entire school year. And in using this tracker, students were not only developing skills and self-awareness and taking responsibility over their own learning, they were also learning an important skill in using technology that would help them later in their lives. The result, upon implementing this tech integrated reading plan, students became more engaged and invested in their own learning and across the board, reading scores grew significantly. Here I want to emphasize again that the reason I was able to see so much success wasn't because my students were using technology, but because of the way in which we were using it. I didn't simply plop kids in front of a computer and ask them to read. I had a strategic plan that utilized technology as a tool to help us achieve a bigger picture goal. In my upcoming 21st century classroom course, I'm going to teach you the nuts and bolts of how to take an integrative approach to technology in your classroom. We'll learn how to leverage technology as a tool that will help you achieve your big goals as an educator, as well as help develop relevant 21st century skills in students. Along the way, we'll also be learning how to use technology to foster creativity, increase engagement and participation, provide authentic learning experiences and personalized instruction, as well as improve communication with families. So I do want to be open and honest with everybody. This is my first online course, and I really want to make sure that I do it right. Because of that, I'm only going to be accepting a limited number of students because I want to be able to provide everyone with the support and help that they'll need in order to feel successful. If all of this sounds like something that you're interested in, make sure to get your name on the early bird wait list by clicking on the link below. And stay tuned for the final video in this series where I'm going to be addressing some of the questions that have been coming up about the course. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you have a great week.